Hi folks, the closes here. Recently I showed you George Wooston home knife and I said um, yeah, they've been making knives for over 200 years. Their trademark was granted in, get it in focus, 1787. So well over the 200 year mark. Well, <clears throat> this um, today, we're going back another 100 years, 105 years to be honest, to be precise rather, Joseph Rogers were granted their trademark, which is the Star and Maltese Cross, um, as you can see there in 1682. So that's about the time when the, the Barlow was a, a new modern knife. It had been out maybe 12 years by then. Anyway, these two Joseph Rogers knives, um, different size boxes, but um, they're actually similarly sized knives. Now, as I've mentioned before, that the uh, Worcester Home and the Rogers names are now part of the Eggington Group, um, made under the Iverson brand. Now, Iverson's, I say their trademark is the double sharp, so it's the sharp symbol of music as opposed to the hashtag. Um, so it's double sharp, so extra sharp. Um, now, the first one, oops, get it right way up, is the 64S, made in Sheffield. Uh, and there it says, it's the Sheffield Pruner. The other one is the 60. 61S, uh, which is the uh, lamb's foot. And the S in both cases stands for stainless steel. Uh, and that's not referring specifically to the blades. It's referring to the handles. Now, of a few, of, of a couple of other little Rogers pen knives, which are made in a similar way to, to these. But uh, these are, you know, kind of basic, proper carry-in-your-pocket work knives in two different patterns. So the handles are very, very similar in both cases, if they're not identical. Um, they've just got the Rogers, um, I, think, I think it's etched rather than stamped, but um, Rogers and the Star and Maltese Cross on the, on the handles. Obviously, they're brass pinned. They're just there's no there's no liners. These are I think the term is webs rather than uh, rather than liners or a frame because they actually are supporting the 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 the, the knife in, in total. So there's no covers, no bolsters, just what would be the equivalent of the brass liners but made in stainless steel so it keeps them very very simple knives and inexpensive knives as a result but nonetheless they are still handmade Sheffield knives so we can see the wee stamp here the star and the Maltese cross uh, Rogers stainless England or Sheffield, England, sorry. Nothing on the other side. And on the lamb's foot, we have exactly the same. Star in the Maltese Cross, Rogers, Stainless, Sheffield, England. Obviously, this is a little lamb's foot blade um, as opposed to the pruner. Now, say I showed you... Um, a pruner from Wiston Home, which is more the sheep's foot style of, um, sorry, the peach pruner style of, of of pruner blade, which is just thinner, slightly straighter. Uh, nice knife, actually, and certainly a good fruit knife. This is the full-on uh, pruner. Still relatively small. I mean, quite often you can see pruners with 
blades above three inches. This one is only this one is only what about two and a half inches, isn't it? With a cutting edge of um two and a quarter. So it's not a huge knife, but it's big enough. And if you're just carrying that in your pocket and you're a, a gardener, there you are, you've got the perfect knife for um, pruning your roses or whatever it is you want to um, prune with it. And again, similar sort of size on the lamb's foot. Now, <clears throat> the only other sort of full-on pocket knife I have from uh, Rogers other than um, a couple of um, folding, uh, sorry, little two-blade equal end pens, is this one. Now, this is again the lamb's foot. Now I've done a video on this in the past, but just to sort of show it compared to this one, Get the tip in to the frame. This one's very similar. Uh, it does, in fact, it's probably the, well, it's not an identical blade, but it's a similar blade. Um, a couple of differences I note, um, other than the surface finishing, the, there's a little sharpening tool here. There's a tiny, tiny one on there, but the shape of the tang here is quite different. I'll take the shape of the kick. This one is stepped in two parts, whereas this one is, is has a curve and a step. But they're similar size. Um, they are they vary in price in that uh, this one's at least twice the price of that one, maybe a little bit more. Um, but then you're getting with this one um, a sort of better finish of polish. You've got brass liners, um, rosewood scales, nickel silver bolsters. Um, I would say though, in terms of fit and finish, this sub twenty pound knife is probably the better of the two. Um, I, I, I was never actually desperately impressed with this one, um, and I've had it quite a while now. Compared to some of the competition, it doesn't really stack up too well. But anyway, these are what we're showing you today. Um, they're reasonably sharp. Oh, I should say there's no nail neck on this one. It's it's purely a pinch open uh, knife, which I of course struggle with because. Um, I don't have any pinch strength, um, but you shouldn't have too much trouble with it. There's, pl there's plenty of uh, plenty of blade to pinch. So if I just shut it down without cutting myself would be good. Now again. Cam tangs, no house tops. Um, now, I don't know if I'll be able to open this. Um, like I say, you will, without a doubt, because there is so much real estate to uh, pinch. But I don't have the the, um, the strength to, to grip it. So I have to cheat. And open it with my teeth. Mustn't let my wife see that, because she'll worry I'm going to chip my teeth. Oh, still a, a good tough action on that. Um, it's probably an eight or nine if you're doing a one of these scales. I always think they're a bit arbitrary, but uh, it's probably around that sort of level. And this one. I believe this is also a cam tang. If I can fold it, should be able to open this one because it's got a nail nick. But again, it's a good stout action. Maybe not the most attractive walk and talk. Um, you know, they do feel a bit gritty, and they. Um, 
they don't snap desperately well. Now, my suspicion is that's because they're um, relatively cheaply made knives, and um, there isn't a lot of time spent on cleaning them. As I, I noticed with, um, I was speaking to Lee White from Taylor's Eyewitness, and he was saying to me that uh, well, after he's made the knives, they go downstairs to the quality control part, and they do all the cleaning. Um, because I'd noticed that some of the knives that were made by one of his oppos, as opposed to his own uh, manufact his own construction, um, were noticeably dirtier. And he said, well, it's not his fault. That's quality control that do the cleaning out of the knives and so on. So um, I thought that was interesting. I suspect that when you've got a knife that's retailing at under £20, there isn't much room for uh, quality control cleaning of these knives. Uh, it just, you know, just isn't... Uh, the, the, if the retail price of one of these knives is, say, £20, the price at the factory gate has to be near a half that. And at uh, £9 an hour or whatever it is, minimum wage, you can't exactly spend a lot of time on making one of these knives. They've got to be made in a few minutes and cleaned, prepared and boxed in that time as well. But anyway, I think they're actually quite good value for money. And if what you want is a little knife that you can carry, that you don't, you won't grieve over too much if you if you lose it in the garden um, or it gets, the blade gets broken or the thing gets gummed up in mud or whatever. These are semi-disposable. Certainly at the price that they're at, um, you could buy one of these and replace it once a year and uh, you know, not hurt you. Anyway, I think that's probably enough. If you like this stuff, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see some more of this stuff, then please ring the uh, notification bell or subscribe and ring the notification bell might be even more sensible okay sorry i'll stop fiddling leave them alone leave them alone Harry. okay thank you very much i'll see you all again soon bye